All right, guys. Fair to say, those last two results just unacceptable. 4 0 loss in the cup. We were going after the quadruple guys into Western Sydney as well. Like, that's really poor. And we should have been able to beat Western United away from home in the league, okay? So we've given the Wanderers a chance going for this next match week. And we've got the Phoenix in local derby. So we really need you guys to step up here. Otherwise, could be going from a quadruple winning season to just a double winning season, which we've already picked up, okay? So we really need you guys to pick things up, improve. Otherwise, you might need to grab a lot of bottles because you'll be well and truly over deserved them. Less bottling, more winning. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 27 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with both the All-Whites and with AF Auckland and coming today games with both of those teams. First up, we play our only serious game with AFC Auckland in the month of March and it happens to be a big one in the A-League. We take on the Wellington Phoenix to win there should take us a step closer to securing back-to-back A-League titles and off the back of that, going to switch our focus to the All Whites last international window before the World Cup in June. And we're going to play the only team who have drawn with us in our run of being undefeated in our last 21 games with the national team. And that team is the War Elephants from Thailand. So if you're looking forward to those two games coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but yesterday with AFC Auckland, we did focus on the League Cup semi-finals and the final. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Off the back of that, picking up that first Australian League Cup here at AFC Auckland. Did have a couple of games in the A-League, and to be fair, they went very well first up, took on Brisbane City, picked up a 2-0 win there, did rotate our team quite a bit off the back of that League Cup final, which we took pretty seriously in terms of our starting 11. We gave David Bustelage a start instead of Chris Wood up front, and thankfully it did pay off two early goals as we pick up a 2-0 win. Did just get a bit iffy with a half hour to go in this game. As you can see, Gravine Tormine, he picked up a red card, but thankfully Brisbane City not up to too much there at Mount Smart, and we do pick up a 2-0 win. Quite an easy watch despite that red card considering they had no shots on targets. That was a very solid performance and also quite good to see David Bustelage doing so well, seeing as I'm still leaning towards him coming into the first team for Chris Wood next season when he departs for Adama Demispor over in Turkey, which we did discuss as well during the course of yesterday's episode, as well as this season's youth intake. Off the back of that, took on Sydney FC. Just did enough here to pick up a 3-2 win, albeit they did score a late goal to flatter that scoreline. A little bit first half was quite even, though we scored an early goal through Chris Wood. They equalised with around about 15 minutes left in the first half, but thankfully then Georgie Fernadze scored one quite early in the second half, and Chris Wood, with 10 minutes to go, scored a goal, which pretty much put this game to bed. They got one late through Amatadidis, but thankfully by that stage, too little, too late, and we pick up yet another win over Ufuk Calais men so far. Fair to say we've got the wood over Sydney FC, despite the fact they've been quite a decent team in terms of the A-League position so far in the save. And then a very convincing when it just felt like things were going just perfectly at this time. We took on Evandale, albeit these guys at this stage are down in the relegation zone, struggling quite a bit. Ben Wayne with five goals from the right wing as we were six and up by half time. He scored one late on. We grabbed that fifth from the penalty spot. Overall, it was a 7-0 win and the goals to Chris Wood and Sebastian Pascali. So this was one of our more impressive wins so far here at AFC Auckland, albeit Avondale are looking like a team who will be down in the second division for next season. But still, they were quite handy last season. That is a very good result. And I was feeling pretty confident going into our next game, which was in the Australian Cup, the seventh round. But it was a tricky one away to the team in the title fight with us in the Western Sydney Wanderers. And we did not get off to a good start in this game. An early penalty here to Chris Wood about halfway through the first half. He had a chance to put us 1-0 up. And based on how the game was going, that would have felt fair. But straight into the arms of Lawrence Thomas. And off the back of that, Western Sydney Wanderers, they just blitzed us. In particular, in the second half, it was here off the back of halftime. Milinovic there picks out Cody Phoenix, and he beats Michael Voodoo and goal corporate Kane. 
and makes it 1-0. And from there, we just never recovered. Garcia on the ball here, not falling off the back of that opening goal. Priestman floats this far post, not too sure where Vood is there, but Ramos will head that one home to make it 2-0. Around about eight minutes later, a corner, a big mess there inside the box, and Kudupov puts that one away to make it 3-0. And just before full time, off the back of us going, Yuri attacking. Late on in this game, Milinovic somehow sneaks that one past food at his near post, and we lose 4 0 to our title rivals, which is a pretty demoralizing defeat. Hopefully, we can bounce back from that in the A League. That was the plan, anyway, as next up, we took on a team just outside the relegation zone in the A-League in Western United. And early on, it looked like we'd be getting back on track here at Western over in Wyndham. They're back at their usual stadium these days. Eight minutes in, Chris Wood with a header to give us a 1-0 lead. Was thinking that'll make up for that early miss that he had in that previous game. But then, 10 minutes later, a shot deflected by one of Western's own players. Then Riku fires that one past Paulson to make it one all early in the first half. That was a scoreline at half time, And then... Just some shocking clearance work there from our defenders. The ball rather fortunately falls there to Wales, and he puts that one home to give Weston a 2-1 lead. But deep in injury time, we have a corner here. Debango floats this far post, and Ben Wayne, I suppose, makes up for the fact that his header down the other end wasn't too good before. And we grab a very late equaliser there to make sure we pick up a point at Weston United. So the Westons have kind of thrown us off our game in the last two games we've played here at AFC Auckland. In competitions, did play a friendly against Auckland United off the back of that saying is we're now out of the cup and have quite big gaps in between our remaining A-League fixtures. As you can see, stats-wise there, that one was quite an even game. Probably more surprising that 4-0 loss to Western Sydney Wanderers. We should have actually won that game based on XG and most of the stats, so I'm not too sure what happened there, albeit to be fair, quite a bit of XG would have gone into that penalty that was saved off of Chris Wibb to rough results there. So we were only one point ahead of the Western Sydney Wanderers going in to this match week in the A-League. And of course, we are out of the Australian Cup, which unfortunately means no quadruple for us this season at AFC Auckland. But in terms of the A-League, still one point clear of Western Sydney Wanderers. And we're playing on a Sunday. Bit of good news going into this match, which is much needed. And that is that the Western Sydney Wanderers somehow Lost 1-0 to the Avondale team that we beat 7-0. So that is a big result for us. Does mean if we can pick up a win here against the Phoenix, that should take us quite close to being on the verge of the A-League title. We'll come back tomorrow and take on the Western Sydney Wanderers in our third to last game of the A-League season. But that is definitely our toughest game in the run home alongside this one where we play the New Zealand derby against the currently fourth place Wellington Phoenix at Sky Stadium. So thankfully a nice boost there with that result with Western Sydney Wanderers off the back of those poor results that we've had in our last two games. And the reason for those poor results might be the fact that we've been dealing with a lot of injuries lately. Ben Wayne's been okay for it. Taylor Tamer just coming back from one and abdominal strain. But of late we've been missing both our usual right wing options. It was mentioned during today's episode. That's why Ben Wayne has been playing there. But Ronaldo he is still out with a calf strain these days, 10 days to four weeks, so he won't feature in today's episode, this big game, the New Zealand derby, where we do take on the Phoenix. Thankfully, those big gaps now do mean without cup football that we will hopefully get Renal back by some stage before the end of the season. Also, Gavin Tormin nearly back from a twisted ankle, out for four to eight more days, so still missing our usual. Two first choice right wingers also, Lucas Nunez, has some sprained ankle ligaments. He's out for 5 to 11 days. He won't be available from the bench for this New Zealand derby. And on top of that, David Basilage, a pull by. So our backup to Chris Wood is also out for this one. It does mean that Adam does FM makes his way onto the bench for the New Zealand derby. And there might even be one more. In fact, there's not, but we've been dealing with a lot of injuries lately, which might be the reason why our form has gone to poop just a little bit, but hopefully a chance for us here to make the most of that slip up by the Western Sydney Wanderers as we take on the Phoenix, a team so far that we have not lost to or even drawn against them this save. All wins, but this season they are doing a lot better than in previous seasons of this save. Hopefully we can get the job done here at Sky Stadium against the team, which is quite a few nice little wonder kids that are playing for us in the All Whites, as you'll see in the second game 
of today's episode, the likes of George McDonald at right wing and also Adam White at left back. To be fair to George McDonald, I think he plays as a striker for the Phoenix, but for us in the All Whites is a right wing option. They're in pretty average form though coming into this one. Free draws from their last three games against teams who aren't doing that well this season in the likes of Western United and Central Coast Mariners, albeit we can't say too much about Western United with that result that we just put out, but hopefully can continue our good record against Chiefy and the Phoenix, and as I said, hopefully get on the verge of our second day league title in a row, especially off the back of being dumped out of the cup by our title challenges, and we'll come back shortly and hopefully take a big step towards that A-League title as we take on the Knicks in a New Zealand derby. And here are the team sheets for this lone A-League game of today's episode. There are the Wellington Phoenix going with a 4-4-2, and it looks like all their key players are in that lineup. In terms of us, I did forget to mention before, you might have seen it on the homepage with AFC Auckland, but Dubango's actually suspended for this one. Nathan Lowe, uh, left backs, that's another thing we are dealing with. And also Ben Wayne, still at right wing with all those injuries in that position. But apart from that, we are at full strength and hopefully can get back on track, pick up three points and get on the verge of a second day league title. And it hasn't taken long for the first highlight of this one. I've thrown here to Wellington Phoenix inside of the first five minutes. Ben Old will pick out Gabriel Sloan Rodriguez at the far post. Another player in the All Whites mix, as is Ben Old, to be fair. And that is not the start we want at Sky Stadium. We go 1 0 down early. Tim Payne with the throne picks out Ben Old. Far post, and Cullen Elliott gets out jumped. That's a very soft goal to concede early. And we 1 0 down. Now about halfway through the first half, we get our next highlight in this game to be fair off the back of that opening goal and highlight to the Phoenix. We've been completely dominant. Just the issue for us so far, one shot on target from our nine attempts. Hopefully we'll get something a bit more serious off here. Hopefully this will be the first highlight that we do see in our favour. But at the moment, the Wellington Phoenix kind of FMing us. We'll see if we can launch something here. We eventually make our way into the opposition half. Max Caputo finally... Back from Australian under 23 duty, gets brought down the ball, falls very kindly to Pascali, and Chris Wibble pick up his 23rd goal of the season, which I think equals the season record for a player here at AFC Auckland in Gwavine Tormin from that first season. We're certainly going to miss him next season, but Chris Wood, good first time finish there. Funny animation getting that onto his right foot, but thankfully we finally strike level halfway through the first half. And about 10 minutes on from that equaliser, still well and truly dominant in terms of stats here, but the Phoenix with a chance to do something on the counter-attack. Thankfully, we break that out, but poor pass there from Victor Ross. And now Nguyen is on the ball here out left, one of the strikers for the Phoenix. Just sizes things up, floats down into the mixer. And Sloan Rodriguez, yet again, will out-jump this time our centre-backs. And they make it 2-1 here to the Phoenix. Sloan Rodriguez proving that he should get some game time in the upcoming international window with the All Whites, but this is not ideal. The Phoenix with pretty much all they've done so far on attack in this game, as you'll see shortly through the stats, but Sloan Rodriguez looking absolutely menacing in the air. Don't think he's that big a player, but they make it 2-1. Yeah. And just what we need, Nathan Lobo picks up an injury because of that. Stefan Negro has to play left back. We've got no other left backs in the first team squad with that suspension to Dubango. But things going very badly here. 2-1 down and an injury with 10 minutes to go in the first half. And it looks like that will do it for the first half, despite the fact that stats-wise we've been well and truly the team on top in this game. The Wellington Phoenix have scored from both their shots on target. We've had lots of shots, not that many on target. And a 2-1 behind. And also that injury to Lobo is a bit of a concern, especially with that suspension to Dubango. Everyone out there is doing okay enough rating-wise. I don't think we'll make any changes. But what we might do is distribute to our fullbacks as well as our centre-backs playing out from the back. We'll see if that just makes things a bit better on that regard. And hopefully this rev up here at halftime will kick us into life, get the second half underway, 2-1 behind. And we eventually make our way up to the 48-minute mark here. And there is a corner in our favour. Pascali plays that back to Vernadze, tries to whip that one into the mixer. But White is there to help tidy things up there for the Phoenix. A nice ball over the top there to pick out quite a promising winger. And Hall Jones, he is someone with a decent amount of potential. Fair to say this year's youth intake for the Phoenix, not as good as last year's. But as I say that, the good player there in Hall Jones does lose out on the ball and a chance here for us to do something 
on the counter-attack, albeit good foot in there from Cully Heald, as we tried to slot through Chris Wood, who was looking for a double, but they boot that deep, and now a chance for Shet again to build from the back, and hopefully pick up an equaliser nice and early in the second half, through Nadze will pick out the Wayne train, picks out there, Callan Elliott, tight angle, takes on a shot, it comes off Jalovic in goal, and the Wayne train will score against his former team continues, a really good patch of form since he has been playing regularly as a right winger. Maybe I need to try that out as well with the All Whites. But a bit of a fortunate goal there from the save on the attempt from Elliott. Falls kindly for the Wayne train to head that one home. And we're level nice and early in the second half. And shortly from back of that equaliser, we might be on the attack here yet again with a Farron inside the final third. Very similar position to where the Phoenix, they scored their first goal. The Wayne train with a shot. That one gets blocked there by Hughes, I think. And a bit of a defensive wall there from the Wellington Finks. But we are still on the attack here. We pick out a tamer. Fernandze will get that past Jalovac. It might be an own goal. It came off Isaac Hughes. And that is just the luck we need off the back of our last couple of performances. A quick fire double here in the second half. And we turn around a 2-1 deficit to make it 3-2 to AFC Auckland. This could be a big result, as I said before, in our pursuit of a second straight A-League title. That one, a little bit fortunate, but on the front foot nice and early in the second half. And now we're 3-2 in front. And it looks like that halftime team talk's done a world of good for us here as we're on the attack yet again at the hour mark, albeit the ball eventually does find its way through to Jalabak and goal. Of course, first time we played the Phoenix this season, Jack Duncan was starting, maybe Jalabak was out injured, but now we are on the attack off the back of that clearance from him. And now Fernadze, he'll play that one back to Stefan Negro. Fernadze lines up a shot from outside the box. It's a wonderful curving effort into the top right corner. Pick that one out. That will be up there for goal of the season. Fernadze with a wonderful effort here. Negro will pick up an assist, but really this was all Fernadze. No stopping that one right into that top right corner. And now we have a cushion goal somehow and a 4-2 in front. And we are playing with a rocket up our bum here in the second half because yet again a highlight here which might be in our favour so far. Complete domination in the second half, which is good to see finally. We might be clicking into gear off the back of that slight change in terms of our distribution from the back at half time. Now Chris would hit a chance there, good foot in there from Kelly Hill, but Bernard Zay back on the ball looks to pick out there. I think that was the Wayne train at right wing, but it is cleared by White this time, albeit plays it back to Jalabak. It's a poor clearance, and Pascali can pick that one up for us, starts to make his way forward, squares it for Max Caputo. He'll put that one past Jalabak, and it's four goals inside pretty much 20 minutes here in the second half, and now we are three goals in front, 5-2, and surely that will be enough for us to pick up a win in this big game, get back on track in terms of our domestic season with AFC Auckland. Nice finish that from Caputo, despite the fact that Jalavak did get a touch on it. And we go 5-2 in front, albeit shortly off the back of that, there is a highlight here in favour of the Wellington Phoenix. Tim Payne with a free kick. Now Hughes plays that forward to Alex Roof and Nguyen on the ball. Now picks out Sloan Rodriguez, of course, scored those two goals in the first half. And now he sets one up for Kayla Nguyen. Good link up there between the two youngsters of the Wellington Phoenix. And maybe this one's not quite over yet as they make it 5-3 with still 20 minutes left. It does feel like there's going to be a lot of goals still in this game. Paulson potentially could have done better there, but Nguyen from point blank range grabs one back. 5-3 with 20 minutes left. And in fact, off the back of that goal back to the Wellington Phoenix to make it 5-3, we're going to take off here Taylor Tamer, only recommended for 75 minutes coming back from a recent injury, Nathan Palmer to come on for him. But thankfully, we're now two goals in front. And just making way into the last 10 minutes of this game, thankfully things have slowed down off the back of that third goal to the Wellington Phoenix. So hopefully they won't man a comeback. We're going to make our last couple of subs here with our final stoppage, seeing as Pascali down to a red heart. Nick Baker can come on for him. Also, we'll take off Caputo coming back from international duty. Stefan Malk to come on for him. And while we're here, might give the youngster some game time off of the bench. We'll bring on Adam Does FM in place of Chris Wood. We'll just tease here the Wellington Phoenix that they're blowing a lead after being 2-1 up at halftime, then found themselves 5-2 down, now 5-3. We'll see if Adam Does FM can do something late, albeit are going to start time-wasting as well, just to make sure that doesn't backfire as we make our way into the last seven minutes of this one. But thankfully, we've turned around what looked like a pretty dicey situation 
at half time with four goals in these first 20 minutes of the second half. And now might be a chance for us here to grab one more back, albeit a good tackle there from Maguire on Nathan Palmer. Now, Son Rodriguez, who to be fair, has hit a blinder today with two goals and an assist is back on the ball here, making his way somewhat down that left hand side, cutting the field a bit more to find Alex Ruffy. Now, Paul Jones. He gets in behind the ball, finds its way through to George McDonald. You'd expect him to put that one away, but thankfully straight into the path of Alex Paulson. Now down the other end, trying to pick out the Wayne train. We can't, but Elliot on the ball for us here against his former team, just like Ben Wayne. Now Palmer will find the Wayne train looking for a double. That one comes off the post. We nearly make it 6-3, but the woodwork comes to the rescue of the Wellington Phoenix. Definitely deserve this one stats-wise, but based on how the game went, wasn't looking that good for quite a while, but thankfully we eventually do end a very eventful game, and that does mean we're going to go four points clear on top of the A-League off the back of a big 5-3 win there over the Wellington Phoenix. As I said, big first 20 minutes of that second half off the back of feeling a little bit FM'd at halftime thanks to those two goals by Sloan Rodriguez with the only two shots on target, but thankfully really good period there. To start off the second half did mean we jumped out to a 5-2 lead. They eventually grabbed a goal back through Kayla Nguyen, but that was all she wrote. Lots of goals in that one. Thankfully, it finishes in our favour. We pick up a 5-3 win to go four points clear on top of the table. Albeit that did come at a big cost, because just checking in on the injuries off the back of that game, Nathan Lobo, he tore his calf muscle, is out for three to four months. So it does mean you have to call up yet another youngster from our youth team, especially as I think Dubango still suspended for one more game. But thankfully our next one, the A-League, is a long way away. As you can see up top there, 27 days until we do take on the Red Cliff Waves. That should be quite winnable at Mount Smart. But thankfully pick up a win there. We'll come back shortly and preview their clash with the All-Whites against the War Elephants. And we've gone forward a little bit to take on Thailand in the first of our friendlies in this international window off the back of that good win there over the Wellington Phoenix, especially early stages of the second half. Before we get stuck into this, you can see a few players are on international duty, quite a few with the all-whites, but a couple who you would not expect to be on international duty. We need to touch on that. Max Caputo, Graham Arnold has called him up for the full Australian team, so unfortunately... He's somewhere at AFC Auckland. We're now not going to be able to future use for the All Whites. Does look like he'll be snapped up by the Australian system. Not too surprising given how well he did on Asian Cup under 23 duty at that most recent tournament. So unfortunately, Max Caputo, not a future All White prospect for us here at AFC Auckland. And the same is the case with Georgie Fernandes. They're off the back of a couple of windows where the media thought he should get included in the Georgian squad. That has been the case. For this window. So another player that we probably can't use in future for the all white. So it does mean those are two players. If some big bits come in for them in the off-season transfer window, we might be willing to let them go. But to be fair, both of them very good players. And Max Caputo, of course, is homegrown nation. So it might be worth keeping him. But Fernand say maybe we could let go of him and try and find someone who's good but from a stronger nation where they're not going to get poached despite the fact you would have thought that wing was quite a strong area for Georgia with the likes of Victor over at Napoli. But unfortunately, two of our players called up for non-New Zealand teams, but quite a few of our players here are featuring in this upcoming international window. The two goalkeepers in Vood and Paulson. Also, we have got Justin Keat, actually a better cam option than Max Garbett. So he gets a call up to the all I should probably start giving him quite a bit more game time with AFC Auckland, if that is the case. But he's going to make his debut in the full national team in this window. Ben Wayne and Chris Wood, obviously. But also, Joe Bell is injured going into this window. So because of that, we have had to call up another defensive midfield option. And the best one that I could find was from our under-19s and our youth intake yesterday in Michael Cornelius Field. Despite the fact he's still too young to play in the A-League, he's not too young to play for the All-Whites. The 15-year-old here will probably make a debut in one of these next two games against either Thailand or El Salvador. We've been in El Salvador before quite early in our run of 21 straight wins, but this is our first friendly of 2026. There you can see the results that we picked up last year. Lots of wins, including, of course, our World Cup qualifiers. But going back to 2024, 
The last game that we played was against Thailand, right off the back of a 9-0 win in our first World Cup qualifier over Papua New Guinea. That might have been a factor in this one, but we blew a 3-0 lead to draw four all the way at Thailand. So definitely looking for some revenge on them here in this first friendly of this last international window before we do start to focus on the World Cup. This was definitely a game that we should have won, having taken an early 3-0 lead, unfortunately. Things just didn't go our way in the second half and tied a bit, as can be the case sometimes with the Gagan press that we do use with the All Whites. Hopefully, a chance for us here to get a bit of revenge, albeit Thailand are uh, actually ranked above us on the world rankings in 84th. We're in 88th, so not too much difference, hopefully, seeing as this one is being played in New Zealand. We can pick up a decent result, albeit no Joe Bell. That is a big loss in midfield, but before we get stuck in to a friendly with the All Whites, we're going to go and do a bus trip of Dunedin at the Forsyth Bar slash Otago Stadium, which doesn't actually have a retractable roof, but nonetheless, time for a bus trip. And of course, we start off these bus trips by finding some accommodation, seeing as most of our New Zealand players definitely won't be based in Dunedin, and we've found a five-star hotel in the Bluestone on George that looks quite fancy-pantsy for a football team. There it is, to be fair from the outside, and this picture doesn't look too great, but apparently it's a five-star hotel that will do for me. All the players can park their fancy cars or their hired fancy cars in the car park there. It's supposed to be very, very nice, so I think this will do. That will be our accommodation for these couple of friendlies that we are going to play. Down in the deep south, of course, usually quite a cold place, especially in winter, but this game I think is being played around about autumn time. Shouldn't be too cold quite yet, and also the fact that we're playing in a covered stadium. It's definitely a covered stadium, no retractable roof, but it does mean it shouldn't be too bad inside of the ground itself. But there you can see the accommodation. It says it was five stars, even though you wouldn't pick it by looking in some of those rooms, but that will do. And it does mean that we've got a four minute drive, I think it was, to Forsyth Bar Stadium, so not too big a one. We do go down the main drag in Dunedin, so we're gonna make our way through that and eventually get our way to what I think is probably the best stadium in New Zealand. And to make our way there, first we have to depart from our hotel, and this is really a bit concerning, our five-star hotel with no vacancy, of course, because we're staying there but it's under construction a little bit. And of course, we've had issues before with struggling off the back of staying somewhere near a construction zone. So hopefully that won't backfire. Apparently this is a five-star hotel. I'm starting to doubt that, but this is where we're gonna leave from and make our way towards the Forsyth Bar Stadium. And continuing to make our way down George Street, things are gonna get quite hectic there because I do think this is one of the main streets in Dunedin. The first point of interest here, good restaurant in a Lone Star. If you like meat, that's certainly a place to go in New Zealand. Quite a decent chain with good meaty meat, big meat slapping meat meals. So there's Lone Star. No doubt the boys will enjoy that if we can pick up a win here against Thailand, as long as the construction on the hotel hasn't distracted them too much. But we'll keep making our way here down George Street and see what else we can find. And taking a slight detour, the next thing that we go past here is the Central Library for the University of Otago. To be fair, thought this might be a little bit older looking, but certainly Dunedin, a bit of a scarfy city in terms of lots of students. Hopefully they get along to the football coming up both this game and the one where we do take on El Salvador. But there's the library. Don't think the boys will be spending too much time there. Probably more interested in the Lone Star and the local cafes. And in fact, just across the road from that library, we now see what is the Clubs and Societies Centre for the Otago University Students Association. Certainly right in the heart here of the student precinct. Hopefully the boys don't get caught up with some of these guys after they get out of here, because some of those clubs and societies might be quite interested in drinking or other things, knowing what the Otago students can be like. And actually you're starting to get quite close to the stadium. Now we made our way down the rest of George Street, and now we're at a place called Turner's Cars, probably most famous for the TV advertisement with the songs that go cars, 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 but there's Turner's Cars there in Dunedin. Looks like a decent amount of land that they can sell their cars from. We'll keep making our way here around Anzac Avenue, past some of the uni buildings, and eventually should make our way. In fact, there it is on the right-hand side. Somehow missed it before, but there's our venue for today's game. It is Forsyth Bar Stadium, as you can see. Got a nice roof on it, which certainly helps as Dunedin is one of the colder regions in New Zealand, especially 
in the winter when rugby and whatnot's on. So it is quite good having a roof on down there just in case you get that really cold weather and stuff like snow in the winter. Thankfully, not down here for the winter this time. For this game, but there you can see it's actually quite a nice looking stadium. Decent enough from the outside, but really the inside is where all the good stuff is. We'll just make our way around the other side of the stadium from the exterior. Not too sure how close we can get here from the road, but we'll make our way. Keep going down here on Anzac Avenue and just see what it looks like from the other side. We can actually go down here. No, we can't. I thought we might be able to do there. Just try and get a little bit closer. Eventually we can. That's a bit of an interesting entrance, but we make our way right to the doorstep of Forsyth Bar Stadium. No doubt this is where the bus would actually come and drop off the players. There you can see it. They can make their way there through that entrance and into the ground itself, but we'll keep making our way here around the outside as much as we can. I think there we can go for a gate, albeit that takes us back, I think, to the 1990s or something. So we'll go back, and now we're actually back at the stadium, but I think that's enough of the outside of the ground, especially as the beef here on the outside doesn't look like there's too much apart from the actual exterior. Not much else going on, but we'll start to make our way now to the inside to take a look at that. And I haven't quite been able to find a 360 view of inside the actual ground itself yet, but I have found the bar, which is kind of useful. Hopefully can enjoy this. Does look like we've got my favorite beer there, third from the left, albeit not too sure if it's the low carb option, but obviously space quite a big brewery down in Dana. But here's some of the corporate hospitality, I imagine, at Forsyth Bar Stadium. The beef beer shouldn't be the sort of ground where you need it, because everything's indoors anyway, but we start to see a bit more of the stadium itself. This one set up for a domestic NPC rugby game, but there you can see what it does look like with the roof on all the time. It's quite a nice ground. As I said, I think it's actually the best one in New Zealand, not the biggest, but seeing as you know what the weather's gonna be, no issue with that. It is quite a nice spot, I think, to watch a sport for and also rectangular shaped stadium. Not too many of those here in New Zealand. Most of them try to cater to both rugby and cricket as well as the occasional football ground. But we'll try and find something on ground level. And it's not really in sport mode, but this is what the ground does look like from the level itself. Nothing up in terms of a rugby post or even ground lines, but this is what it does look like from the ground level itself. This must have been for some fan day or something, but here's what Forsyth Bar Stadium does look like. Quite a nice setup. Quite a good atmosphere, I think, from what I've heard of it. Down there, still haven't been there. Definitely a ground that is on my bucket list, but certainly with that nice roof over the top, I would pick that to be the best in New Zealand at the moment anyway. I know Christchurch is getting one quite similar. It is a bit better with a roof over the top, but here's Forsyth Bar Stadium. Hopefully, it's a place where we can get some revenge on the war elephants. And here are the team sheets for this international friendly with the All Whites. Massive game this one against Thailand. 88th in the world versus 84th. Can we our usual best 11? Brattich in the DM role from Auckland City will be, I think he's off soon. The Melbourne victory, the only change from our usual best choice 11. With no Joe Bell there with Thailand, they'll be in the blue. Hopefully can pick up a win and make it 22 games without defeat. And the first highlight comes just shy of the 10 minute mark. A corner here in our favour, Callum McCowart puts that one far post looking there. For I think that was Bratic. It eventually makes its way out to George McDonald. Superb in his first couple of games in that last window where we did play. Now McCowart starts to cut inside. Good chance here. Tries to curve that one bottom right corner. But the woodwork comes to the rescue there of the war elephants. So it's still nil all. And not too long off the back of that opening chance to us. Now we're somewhat down the other end here. A highlight on halfway. A throw in for the war elephants. Definitely going to say that a lot today. Because it's such a good nickname. A lot better than the All Whites, if I do say so myself, albeit that might be blasphemous as the coach of the team, but they're on the attack here, and they score a goal through Ikenat Panya. Pretty sure he scored against us in that four-all draw over at the Thunderdome Stadium. They have such good names over in Thailand, but unfortunately, not what we want here, as we're 1-0 down. Salah Chat plays that one out there, gets it back and squares it for Panya. We are tightly marking them, but Panya just finds himself there in a bit of space, point blank range, can put that one past Alex Paulson, and the War Elephants are one nil in front. And rather annoyingly, it's looking like that will be the deciding factor in the first half, just the one shot of the game will be they got another one off late, but their one shot on target to be fair, with the same amount of shots on target, but more overall, they made it count to Thailand, and go into halftime with a 1-0 lead here in Dunedin, so that is not too good to be fair. All our players out there going pretty fairly, Libby on a 6.4, 
might send the message here and take him off for young Adam White, that good new gen from the Wellington Phoenix that came through last year. But I think that's all we'll do. Everyone else out there is on a 6.5 or better. But we'll see if a bit of a rev up here at halftime can talk these boys into some form because that was a very average first half. Not angry, just disappointed. And hopefully we can turn this around and make it 22 games without defeat. And just come up to the hour mark and that halftime talk definitely hasn't worked because it's still 1-0 to Thailand. And we're now going to take off Sarpreet Singh, who was just sitting there briefly on a 6.5. Ryan Thomas only recommended for 45 minutes can come on. He's been quite decent for us so far in the save. And also Anto Bradich, actually not the best DM option that we've got in the squad because that's our new gem from AFC Auckland. And Beal will give him his first taste of professional football in international. I know that's weird but we can do it, can't do it at AFC Auckland yet, so our new gen will get his first bit of game time with the All Whites, but we're still 1-0 behind. And not too long off the back of those previous subs, now Nico Kuhn at right back has actually been really good for us so far with the All Whites and the saves down to a red heart. Callum Elliott from AFC Auckland can come on them and also might just chuck McDonald onto a attack, seeing as that might suit him being a regular striker with the Wellington Phoenix, trying to get on the attack a bit more here as we're still a goal behind. Yeah. And would you believe it, right off the back of that, another game where we get an injury this time, Ryan Thomas, he is so injury prone, it's a potential lower leg injury, because of that we're going to cancel what we were going to do, is going to take off Marco Stamanek there on a red heart, but it does mean Justin Keat now will make his all-whites debut in that central attacking midfield role, giving a lot of our youngsters from AFC Auckland a debut also, just looking at what we can do in this game, might also distribute to fullbacks like we did for that second half against the Phoenix with AFC Auckland, and also chuck Adam White at wing back onto attack. Hopefully, that will give us something going forward as we're still 1 0 behind. And just about to make our way into the last 10 minutes of this game, it's now time to go attacking and also gonna make some changes here. Michael Beale can play as a ball winning midfielder on support, gonna try and go fully for this now because losing our 21 game unbeaten streak to Thailand would not be too good. Bill Tui Loma can go as a ball-playing defender alongside Tyler Binden. Also going to tell our guys to be more expressive and also will play with a higher defensive line. And let's hope that gets something happening late on in this game. The second half so far has been up to nothing. And eventually a highlight, albeit it might be in favour of the War Elephants. They pump that one in behind. Thankfully, Cullen Elliott can tidy that up, albeit that's a shocking pass. And Thailand will continue here on the attack, the goal scorer Panya plays that one back to a teammate, Adam White nearly gets that one for us, a chance here as Thailand do square that one, but thankfully Alex Paulson comes up with a decent save, but this has been a very average effort, might be missing Joe Bell a lot more than I thought we would, especially against the team only ranked slightly above us in the world, that's not too promising going in to a World Cup, hopefully this is just a one-off, we'll get back on track, maybe Thailand just one of those teams. Also off the back of that, going to tell our guys now distribute quickly in terms of when we do play out from back, we'll demand more. And as that happens, we do have a corner looking for Chris Wood here. At the far post, that one comes off the crossbar. That's something we should really be looking to exploit. Big tall man against a bunch of people from Thailand who usually aren't that big. Now into five minutes of added time, there is a free kick to Thailand, but hopefully this is a chance for us here to turn the ball over. Good foot in there from Binden, and Callan Elliott can recover, but yet again, that's a really poor clearance. Thankfully, Adam White spares his blushes, and chance for us here to hit on the counter and hopefully grab an equaliser at the very least, but Thailand, bit of a bogey team for us here at the moment with the always Tui Loma on the ball. Beal, his first touch that might have been as a professional footballer. Now Elliott plays that forward to George McDonald. What can he do? The Wellington Phoenix man squares it nicely. Can't quite find Keat though, but we are still on the attack. Cullen Elliott tries to put that one top left corner, but it goes over the bar. Unfortunately, Cullen Elliott not having that good a game off the bench, albeit very late highlighter thrown here inside of the final third. Chris Wood with a here it goes just over the bar, and I dare say that might just about do it. And unfortunately, we've suffered a defeat for the first time in 21 games. Sounds almost like the Undertaker's streak at WrestleMania, but we lose 1-0 to Thailand. We have more shots than them, but they were very poor quality shots. The XG was higher than ours, and we suffer a 1-0 defeat in New Zealand to the War Elephants.
And before I go forward and show you guys the highlights from the second friendly from this window against El Salvador, because that game actually didn't have that many highlights, we are missing a player for the World Cup, Ryan Thomas. As I said, he's very injury prone. This one is a big one, a damaged Achilles tendon, out for six to eight months. He's definitely gone for the World Cup. So that's someone that we need to replace once we do get to that tournament, which will hopefully be right at the start of next week. But as I said, I'll go forward, show you guys highlights from El Salvador before we wrap up today's episode. And here we are with the highlights from the El Salvador game. They're actually ranked one spot above Thailand and actually put out a younger team for this game, which was a little bit risky. But we got off to a very good start here. Sarpreet Singh better in this game. At the 20-minute mark, he gives us a 1-0 lead. And only 10 minutes later, Justin Keat, in his first start for the All-Whites, scores a goal to make it 2-0. That was the scoreline at halftime then. In the second half, Keat scores an absolute screamer. Two goals now in two games for the All-Whites for the young AFC Auckland man, as I said, probably should be playing him a bit more next season if he can do stuff like that. They grabbed a goal back there through Brian Gill to make it 3-1, but right off the back of that, down the other end, and we were on the attack yet again. Marco Stamanek picks out Sloan Rodriguez, and Cullen Elliott scores his first goal for the All-Whites, the AFC Auckland men, stepping up nicely in this game, and then we made it 5-1. Elliott making his way down that right-hand side, floats it into the mix looking for Chris Wood, but it finds its way to Gabriel Sloan Rodriguez, continuing his good form from that New Zealand derby. Puts that one away. They grab a goal off the back of that here. Do El Salvador. Lots of numbers here. On the counter attack. Bit of a deflection. It finds its way through to Carabantes. But that is a convincing 5-2 win. No changes in terms of tactics off the back of that first game. Just for some reason. Our younger players with worse star ratings. And attributes than those guys who started in the Thailand game for the most part. They perform better and pick up a 5-2 win. So thankfully, back on track there with that second international friendly in that window. It does mean that we actually stay in 88th on the world rankings. Thailand get a good little jump off the back of that up to 81st. So there's certainly a team on the rise. Might need to still try and get some revenge on those guys because they are certainly proving a bit annoying for us here with the All Whites at the moment. But it does mean we'll probably go into the World Cup ranked 88th. And only a few days off the back of this, we do actually have the draw for the World Cup itself. We'll bring you guys that come the start of tomorrow's episode. But that will do it for today. Bit of a busy episode. A big win in the New Zealand derby with AFC Auckland putting us on the verge of a second straight A-League title. And also a bit of a mixed international window there with the All Whites, our final one, before we do get in to the FIFA World Cup. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well we'll come back tomorrow and the first game we'll play will be a massive one with AFC Auckland our third to last one of the season we'll take on the Western Sydney Wanderers I think if we beat those guys and also Redcliffe before then that should be enough for us to secure the A-League title and if we don't do it in that game we'll hopefully get the job done in either the ones against Sydney United or the Perth Glory. So we'll come back tomorrow and wrap up the third A-League season of the save. Hopefully complete a treble winning season and also do the end of season review. And as I said, our draw for the group stages of the FIFA World Cups. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.